Hey everyone, I am still in my classroom. It's about 6.20 p.m. I just went and picked up my youngest son from NAL practice, which is National Academic League, and brought him back here so that I could um, record a few things in my classroom, things that I do uh, for structure, and pretty much how my kids run the classroom. And this is something you have to teach and um, kind of go over it. So I'm just gonna kind of take a tour and then show you a few things. I'm sure I'm gonna forget some things and I'll try to make more videos um, just to show you. So we'll start over here in my closet. First thing that is important to me is organization. I have to be organized. This is my closet. I have a tub for everything. So at Walmart, I'll buy the, the tubs that come in packs or go to the dollar store, I love that. Um, I have a job right here that has all my students' names, and I won't show that, but it has all my students' names on this list, and then I have belts because we are a uniform school. And so it's one of my students' jobs to check out the belts if they've forgotten their belt because if they don't have a belt for the day they owe lunch recess and so i understand that some some kids either walk out without their belt or um, they don't have any belts at home so i try to keep them here and it's his job right after we do the pledge of allegiance he comes over here because on the announcements they tell the kids to check their uniforms make sure their shirts are tucked in make sure they have the belt on um, make sure that they're dressed appropriately for school and so he comes straight to the closet and so do the other kids that need their belt and he checks the the name off and gives them a belt and at the end of the day he comes back over he calls those students um, i tried to do it by myself last year and it did not work kids were constantly going home with my belts and then they would forget them and then i was running low on belts so now it's a classroom job and it actually works really well so now we're going to head this way um, like i said i'm very big on organization so the kids desks need to be uh, super organized, super neat. They have everything in a place and a place for everything. So they have um, folders for reading, for math, for writing, and they I, I'm really big on organization, like I said. So they must put all their loose papers in their binder and then they have some uh, spiral notebooks that won't fit. So um, if Every once in a while, I will do this where if the students' desks are clean, I have these were sticky notes, little thumbs up sticky notes, and I laminated them. And so I'll go around the room and if their desk is clean, then I put a, a sticky note on their desk or a thumbs up on their desk. And it's one of my students' jobs when she sees that I've done it, because I don't do it every day, so it's a surprise, you never know when, so you always want to keep your desk clean. But when she sees it, it's her job to come and she grabs my prize bin and she will call the kids one at a time to come and get their prize out of the prize bin. And um, she knows that if they don't have a thumbs up, they don't get a prize. So she, she makes sure to exchange for uh, the thumbs up for the prize, sorry. So coming this way, I have two students that before every lesson, they will champ us, which I had a video of the champs. If you did not watch it, go to my channel and look for it. It's, it's all about how our lessons should go with their conversation level and if they need help, what they need to do, what our activity is, what their movement should be for that activity, who's participating and how to be successful. And then I also have what we call a social contract. Um, we are a Capturing Kids Hearts school. And so this is kind of new with that, um, and I love it, but we made a social contract, which is all about how we want to be treated by each other, how they want to be treated by me, how they think I want to be treated by them. Um, and so we pick, uh, we have a whole list of, of different words that they've chosen, but a student comes up and she picks three kids to pick three focuses just for whatever lesson it is we're on. So this is our social contract focus. For our last lesson today, they picked respectful, focused, and being nice and kind to each other, which I thought was very good. And they have to give reasons why they chose those. How is that going to help us be successful for whatever lesson it is that we are learning? Um, I also have a list, which I won't show their names, but we have iPads in our classroom, and so we get on something called Dreambox, which actually puts them at the level that they are for math, and it challenges them. Um, they, it's kind of, they get to play games, so they make it kind of fun for the kids, but it is math problems that are at their level. And they also get to earn free time on the iPads after that, as long as they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. So I have this list, and if you could pull back a little bit, Brendan, and so you can't really see the names, but just a quick glimpse, their names are on this side, and then I can move them over if they didn't earn their free time um, for that time, for that day. Um, we'll keep walking this way. 
Oh, I do have some students who their job is every time I have papers to hand out, they are my material managers, so they know what I'm talking and I just have papers in my hand and they know that it's time for them to be passed out. They just get up and they come to me and they hand them out so it runs really smoothly and I don't have to do that all myself. I also have a student who changes our schedule. Mostly it's just our specials for the day and the day that we're on, so she comes and changes that. I also have a student who, I have three baskets here. One is for their agendas, and so once they get that filled out with what we're doing for the week, um, and then these circles are for their behavior, and so there's blue, green, yellow, and red, and uh, every day they take this home, they have to get assigned by their parents, but this is where the agendas go. They must fill it out, and I have a paper. If they've forgotten it for that day, I have some papers over here. They know they have to grab it, and they have to fill out that paper, but there are repercussions if they do not bring their agenda. If they keep forgetting their agenda, they have to owe recess. This is really big for us because we are an AVID school. I don't know if you've ever heard of AVID, but that's Advancement Via Individual Determination. So um, it's all about being college-minded, being organized, and, and having your things and being responsible. So I'm really big on that, pushing my kids. I also have my homework basket, and I have my classroom assignments basket. So, and everything I have is, is organized. I, like I said, I have a bin for everything. Um, I also have a student who is the door holder. I have a line leader. I have a bathroom monitor for the girls' bathroom and the boys' bathroom. Um, it's really important. This is something I came up with. I think it was just last year because I, I know my kids like to write with their decorative pencils and I'm, you know, when they earn them, great. They deserve to write with them. But I always tell them, I'm not a pencil sharpener. I'm a teacher. And they always want me to stop in the middle of my lesson to sharpen their pencil because they want to write with it right then. So I went to the dollar store and I bought these little toothbrush holders, and in the toothbrush holders, they put their decorative pencils that they want sharpened. And after they put it in here, I've kind of made this little thing. It's just a little dollar basket and these little plastic cups, and I hot glued them in there, and they just put it in there. That lets me know that they need that pencil sharpened, and it does have their numbers on it, so I know whose is whose. Um, I'm the only one that can sharpen the pencils because they'll take a pencil this big and when they're done it'll be this big and they're wasting time and they're wasting supplies. So I always make sure, and over here you'll see, I have my pencils. I have these are the sharpened ones and these are the ones that are dull and need to be sharpened. Invest in a good electric pencil sharpener. It's, it's been a lifesaver, but I am the only one that sharpens the pencils. It doesn't take me maybe two minutes to get them sharpened and put them in here. So if a student needs a pencil, they don't distract anybody, they just get up, take their dull pencil, put it in the, the pencils that need to be sharpened, and grab another pencil. And if I see them hanging out too long, I let them know, I just sharpened those pencils this morning, grab one, come sit down. You don't get to be picky, you just grab a pencil and come and work. And so they know my pencil rules. It's really important because I've saved a lot of pencils that way. Um, I have a student, I have my little mini fridge, and so I have a student whose job it is to get their waters out of the fridge during a certain time of day. It's after recess. We don't stop to get drinks in the hallway because we have to get right to our math tier. And so they come and they lay them out here. And if you've watched one of my videos, I think it says these kids run the classroom and they show you just how structured they are when they come in from recess to go into math tier. Um, I have a student that does the hand sanitizer. I have a student that hands out the iPads and then he puts them away and plugs them in another student helps him. Um, two of my boys are in charge of pulling the waters out. Um, but I do have a job for everything and I'm also going to make another video on some things that I do for behavior uh, to make sure. The, the, the first thing, and I'll probably start that video with this, is build relationships with your kids. It's really important. Um, and the, the second most important thing in my classroom is to be structured and to have all these jobs for my kids and, and let them feel like they are part of your classroom because it does help things run smoothly. Not every day is perfect. I mean, we still struggle on some days, but it really does help. So I hope that kind of gives you some ideas of different things that you can do in your classroom. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to make more videos, but until then, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell, and we'll see you later. Bye.